Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can self-host DocG to kind of manage all your Docker and Docker Compose um, images and stacks into one kind of nice graphical user interface for you to kind of just easily set up your you know Docker application, whether it's you know like a Pi-hole, an Nginx server, or something else, but easily deploy it with a web user interface instead of you know doing all the command lines on the back end and you know trying to figure it all out. So this um, is a nice self-host application that um, you can find on GitHub that was recently released. So I found it and been playing around with it and really love it. Um, it's really kind of very simple. Um, it's not very you know complicated at, at all. It's kind of similar to like Portainer, but just kind of more for you in regards to just, hey, here's you know a place that you can just put a Docker Compose, copy, paste, run it, see if it works um, without all the you know, extra settings or whatnot. So it's really super simple. So we'll show you how you can get started and run and set that up today in your own home lab or wherever else. So let's get started, guys. All right, so first off, we will create a server that essentially will just be running DocG and then add all the you know different things that and show you the different things that you can use with it. So to set up our base server, we'll update our DNS. Um, we have it in our GitLab, all, all of our DNS stuff um, to push out. So let's add this in here real quick. DocG, uh, DocG in here, and we'll add that. And then 84 will be the IP. So add uh, docg. Um, so now that we have that set up, we'll need to go to our Ansible Playbooks repository to add it to our inventory um, so that we can provision the virtual machine that will be running this. So docg, we'll add it to our inventory file. And we will commit that. So now that we got all the prereqs done here, and if you're interested in how all this works on the back end, check out my automation series playlist. Um, it will pretty much walk through what I have all set up and how it all works on the back end. Um, so we'll go to our AWX server here and we'll actually run the playbook that will essentially create the server. All right, so from here, we'll go to templates and we will run our create new VM template, which will essentially create our VM from uh, our template in VMware, patch that VM, uh, install Docker and Docker Compose, create a cert on our step CA, and then um, put it out and set up Nginx so we can proxy pass and set up TLS for our machine here. So we'll kick this off. We'll fill in a few blanks here. So. Um, the host name will be docg. We'll set up the IP to be the 84 address um, that we set up in our DNS earlier. Um, the drag the name of the VM, we'll just name dragon docg because this will just be what's in vCenter. And then for the proxy pass, what we'll do here is actually go to the GitHub for docg um, and look at their compose file. So we can see that it is listening on 5001. So we will set the proxy pass to be HTTP localhost 5001. And then we'll leave the add upload headers to be true. The add upload headers is just a few um, proxy uh, setting for headers and stuff like that. Um, so we'll just leave that there. So we'll hit next and launch. So as you can see, this workflow essentially runs uh, five templates that just essentially explained everything that I explained earlier, create the VM, patch it, install Docker, create a certificate, and then set up Nginx. Um, so this will take a few minutes here. So we'll, we'll fast forward the video uh, once this part is completed. So stay in tuned. All right, so now everything has finished. It created, installed, patched, and done the things. So what we can do is now go to our server and we can, or our terminal and log into the server here. So we'll log in. Um, we can see that Docker is installed, Docker Compose is there, um, as well as our Nginx configuration um, that we can see. And we have you know, our headers, we got our localhost proxy pass. So all that we don't have is the Compose file to actually and to run it. So let's go back to our GitHub repo for what they have and read the readme. 
um, and see what, how their basic installation is. So looks like we'll make a few directories. Um, so I'm assuming op stacks is for the stacks that will be what we'll create. The app doc G will be for where we'll be. Um, so I, I read ahead and we'll CD to this directory. Um, looks like we'll curl and get the file that we were just looking at in the GitHub. Um, so we can cat the compose file. And we'll see it's on 5001. We're going to mount data to app data and we'll set the doc G stacks to be in up stacks. So what we can do is doc compose up and we will detach. So we'll let this run. Um, it'll take a few seconds, but it should be pretty quick. And there it is. So from here, we should be able to now go to a browser and go to docg.dragon.local. Boop. And it will prompt us for the login that we want to create. So we'll create the username. We'll set up a password. We'll repeat that password and we will hit create. Um, so from here, this is our base homepage for docg. Um, it's very simple. Um, this is actually, if you've ever used Uptime Kuma or Kuma Uptime, I can't remember if it's called um, Uptime Kuma. Yeah, yeah, Uptime Kuma. Um, it's actually the same kind of interface and it's actually created by um, the same person that created Uptime Kuma. Um, so thank you so much. I love Uptime Kuma also. So, um, But to kind of explore this a little bit, we can go to the console. So this is our console for actually our VM, I believe. So we can do like a doc compose PSA. So you can see that it's running docg um, in here and you can do other commands. Looks like it is limited. So you can't like do like, you know, you can't just do like an RM, RF slash um, in here, but um, it's nice to be able to see, you know, without needing to log into the server, what you can do here. Um, so going back to the home, we can see that you can do a Docker run and convert from, you know, a Docker run to a Docker compose, or you can hit compose up here to deploy a compose file. So by default, it actually has an Nginx compose here um, set up, but what we'll do, and I like to use this as an example, um, pyhole, we'll just use a the Docker compose for pyhole um, in here and can kind of show you how it changes. So you can actually edit the compose file. So in, over here in the right hand side of this corner, um, you can copy and paste um, the settings that you want. And then in this case, I will update this to be 8080 because I'm already listening on 80. Um, and then we can name this like pyhole. Um, hole. Um, and then, so we got the container and whatnot. So that's pretty much it. We can save. Um, so once you have that, um, we can essentially click start and it will essentially give you the output, like how you saw earlier, where it's running and you can see it running. Then you got the terminal for the logs. So this is the logs that output for this container. Um, and then you can see that it has started and is active and it's listening on these ports. Um, so you can actually, okay. Yeah. So you can actually click on this. So like, for example, if I wanted to go to this on 8080, you can click on it. Now this says forbidden, but that's because in Docker, um, it expects it to be slash admin. So it's a little bit different, but you can easily click on the ports here to essentially go to, you know, the host name and then the port. Um, so you can see how we have that set and it actually pulled up the pie hole for that. So it's super easy to just, you know, get a compose file, add it, update it, and pretty much have it set. Um, so if we go back to the console though, um, we can see when the ops stats directory. So if we LS, you can now see that we have a pie hole, which is related to the stack here. Um, so we can go to CD pie hole. Um, and we can see that, you know, it downloaded the compose file, got all the settings and configured everything that we needed here. Um, so um, it's pretty much how you would use it um, on the back end, but really super nice and simple to easily do, you know, doc compose or Docker runs um, and then convert to compose file to actually run it. And then you can see how it's active over here. Um, we can stop it. And then it should say not inactive afterwards. So you can say exited. So you can see once you create, you know, more compose files, you can see, you know, hey, what's active, what's not active. You can even hit the update so that it would pull the new latest container um, for that project. So 
that's kind of the high level overview of all, you know, doc, doc G and how it works. Um, it's super simple, uh, makes it very user friendly to just, you know, get a compose file and just let it run. So um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.